Welcome to my kitchen here at Trails N62. It's a nice spring day here in December in the Ozarks. <laughs> so, now the weather's real nice outside. The sun is shining. Stormed last night, but that's all right. It's December and it's Missouri. What can I say? But today I'm going to be doing some pepper steak. Now, I like pepper steak, and uh, that's usually what I try to get when I go to a, a Chinese restaurant. So let's get started. Now I'm going to be using my Nesco electric canner and it holds five pints. I'm going to be doing these in pints and I'm going to be using wide mouth. I'm going to make some in regular mouth later on but I just have five wide mouth pints left. So what I have here is my steak. Now normally what you would use is a uh, good quality steak or a good type of steak, a round steak or a small roast or something like that that you can cut into strips and you just cut it into little uh, strips to put in to the jars and and you use whatever kind of beef that you want to use to cut into strips. This is, uh, is probably not the best to use but it's what I've got and I got it on sale at my local uh, discount grocery store and it was a good price and it is beef uh, it's, the box said it was it was flip steak. So now you want to make your strips when you make them uh, so that they're less in your jar. Hang on, let me grab a jar. Jar. So you want to make sure that when they stack in your jar, because you're just going to stack them in there straight down in, that uh, it's going to be below your one inch mile mark here, below the rim the bottom rim here that's one inch so you want it right there so you don't want them any more than that long okay uh, because you're going to just stack them in there and you can put broth on top of them to inch head space so mine's going to be a little different because i've got this steak it's not going to stand up like strips of steak with that in mind i also took my peppers and slice them you want them about that thick that's about thickness half inch something like that but then I cut mine in half to make sure that they wouldn't stick up over the jars but and since this steak's not going to stand up I won't normally be able to do it like I would that made a lot of sense didn't it and I'm also going to add onions to mine and they're kind of chunked up because that's just the way you do these things and so they're just uh, chunked up like that and I'm just going to sprinkle those in there. Normally if you have the kind of steak that you're supposed to use for this, you would slice your onion in long slivers too so that you could basically just lay it all out in your hand, the steak and the peppers and the onions and just put it in a little clump in your hands and just tighten it up and just drop it down into the jar that way and then you put your beef on top of it. But I can't do it that way because my steak doesn't stand up. So, now I'm going to season my steak a little bit. Uh, you can season it or not season it. It's, it's optional. Uh, you can always season it afterwards. You can't take the seasoning out, but you can put the seasoning in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little pepper. It is pepper steak after all. And I'm just sprinkling on the top. It'll mix up when it gets in the, in the canner. And then I'm going to take about a quarter teaspoon of salt. My salt jar is running low. Quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to take about a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. You can use minced garlic if you want to. You can put a couple of, put a garlic clove in there, half a garlic clove in there. It depends on how much garlic you like. That's just what I put in. 
like I said, spices can be added, seasoning can be added afterwards, but you can't take it away. Alright, so that's our beef. And I've said I've got my onions chopped up here. And this is about uh, two smallish medium onions. Okay, that's what I use. I'm just going to divide it up between the five because there's no set amount that you want to put in there. Just put in whatever you want. If you don't want to put onions in there, don't put onions in there. You can add more meat and, and peppers. And then this that I'll divide up between them is three large green peppers. Three large green peppers that I sliced up, cut up, and, and cored, and all that washed, and all that kind of good stuff. So, you can use yellow peppers, red peppers, whatever color peppers you want to to put in here. I like the flavor of the green peppers better, so I just went with straight green. Uh, but that's three large. Again, you're just going to put in what you want. If you're not putting onions in, you may need more peppers. So it's just on, on what you want to do. But that's just to let you know what I used. Now let's get uh, everything rolling here. Now, like I said, the best way to do this, when you're using the right kind of meat, is you kind of lay it out in your hand, making sure that your strips of meat are small enough to fit in the jars, and your peppers, and your onions, and you just kind of stick them down in, into the jar. And if it's too high, you just press it down in there. Now it's a lot easier to do when your meat is the right kind of meat. And it's easier to do. But that's just for demonstration purposes right now because uh, my meat is kind of different. Alright, so I'm going to stuff the rest of these. Now my jars were hot, but my ingredients weren't so much. So, but my jars are not cold, so I'm going to put some hot beef broth in it, and that'll warm everything up. You want a one inch head space, so I'm going to put some beef broth in, and then I'm going to debubble it. Now, since the meat is raw, Then I'm not going to fill these up all the way because they meat raw meat will generate its own juice. So some people don't put any broth in this whatsoever. I like to put a little broth in mine just to be safe. Uh, and since uh, the beef will raw beef will generate its own juices, uh, I put these about halfway filled with beef broth. Now one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to thicken your broth before you put it in. You do that afterwards when you heat it up. If you want a thicker broth, then you thicken it. When you cook it. So we're going to wipe our rims with vinegar. Make sure there's nothing on the rim. You want those rims to be good and clean. Don't want anything between your lid and your rim because that will keep it from sealing. We'll put the rest of our vinegar in our pressure canner. We've already got eight cups of hot water in the pressure canner. That's what it calls for, my Nesco. Then we're ready to put our lids on. We'll Tighten her down. Snug it. Then finger tight. Now 
Now I always heat my lids. They say you don't have to anymore on the new ball lids, but a lot of my lids are uh, off brand, so I heat them anyway. Some people say they have trouble with every time they have some don't seal. And I've seen a recommendation where you you might snug them down as tight as you can. Then back them off. And then do it like you would normally do it. I don't know. I'm not going to recommend that. I don't do that. I just do it this way and it works for me. Occasionally I'll have one that won't seal, but very rarely do I have one that doesn't seal. And I've had some seals come loose after they're on the shelf. That happens. Now you're looking at a wet towel. Alright, so let's go right over here. And there's my five pint jars in the canner ready to go. There you have the pepper steak. Looks pretty good. So far, so good. Doesn't look like there was hardly any siphoning or bubbling over one of the two. So, there's the pepper steak. Five pints done. I'm going to do five more pints. Regular pints this time. I'm out of wide mouth. Alright, let's talk about eating this pepper steak that I made. It turned out pretty good. I, I did 10 jars, 10 pints of pepper steak that I can. I did have one that didn't seal. Now, jars that don't seal happens to everybody. It happens to the best of us. happens to the worst of us. It just happens. What The reason jars don't seal is, is basically one of two reasons. Either you, the pressure has, has released too quickly inside the canner, and cause what's called siphoning and that's where the outside pressure becomes lower than the inside pressure of the jar and it sucks stuff out of it and that'll cause it not to seal. You can also have it not seal if your jar lids are not tight enough it might not seal. And it might not seal if, you're, if your air space, your head, air heading, your, <laughs> your head space is not good enough because what happens is when the, the liquid boils inside the jar it'll boil over and it boils up past the, rim, the rims. So those are a couple reasons. Sometimes that'll happen it'll still seal but those are a couple reasons or a few reasons that it doesn't seal. Uh, so I had one that didn't seal. That's okay. It happens. I just had pepper steak for supper. Now how did I eat it? You can thicken the sauce if you like thicker sauce. I think, uh, if I recall right, it's like one tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with one tablespoon of water. You bring it to a boil. This is for a quart. So for a pint, it would be half that. Half a tablespoon of cornstarch, half a tablespoon of water. Bring it to a boil. Add that in, stirring constantly like you would any gravy and make it thicken. I don't do that. I think you can also use flour to do that basically the same way. Uh, it's like making gravy is what you're doing. You're making gravy with the liquid that's in there. So I add my dehydrated rice, which is basically minute rice, to it. So I take my, took my pint, I poured it in, brought it to a boil, I put in a third of a cup of dehydrated rice, I let it boil for a minute, and then I high simmered it for five minutes and cooked it that way. I think, I haven't tried it, but I'm going to try it with some of my other stuff, is you can put the rice in, uh, after bring it to a boil, put the rice in, let it boil for a minute, then turn the heat off and cover it for five minutes. I think it'll do the same thing. The rice absorbs the moisture in there. Uh, I think it works either way. I usually just keep cooking it and stirring it for five minutes, and then I'll let it set for a minute to finish absorbing the liquid. Because the rice is already cooked. So all you're doing is getting the liquid into the rice. It'll absorb the liquid around it. That's how I do mine. Now it makes a one dish supper and that's the way I like it. Not much mess. I have a pan, I have a spoon, I have a jar and a fork. I use paper plates. So that's how I do it. Now for a family, it'll probably be a little different because a lot of families they like to have a little more texture and, and uh, different things with their meal. I understand that. 
me, it doesn't matter. But uh, you can just heat it up and make your rice and then put it on top of your rice after you cook it. You can uh, add some steamed vegetables to it, stir-fried vegetables like you would any other place, egg rolls, you know, whatever you want to do in that regards to make the meal. The other thing is that I found the peppers and onions, when you pressure cook it as long as you do for meat, they kind of lose their texture. You get the flavor. The flavor was there. I, I liked it. It was good. The flavor was there, infused into the liquid, infused into the meat, and there was still some peppers and onions barely discernible as far as the texture was concerned. So if you want that texture, like what you would get to go into a restaurant and you get order pepper steak, there's a little texture to the peppers and the onions. If you want that, then all you have to do is just stir fry you a few peppers and onions on the side to add to it, and it will make it just like regular pepper steak you would get in a restaurant. Remember, we're canning for our meals at home and for ease and convenience of the pressure canned already made meals. So there's a balance there that you have to make. Do I want this? Especially if you have a family, you're probably going to want to do something a little more than just one meal in a jar. Not always, but generally you would. So that's just an idea of how to do it. Mine turned out great. I liked it. I was a little concerned about the meat because it was so thin the way it was sliced, but it turned out great. It didn't break down as much as I thought it might, and uh, the flavor was delicious. So I made me the one plate meal. It was great. I loved it. Uh, I may try it sometime with some little uh, saute, some stir fry, some, some uh, fresh peppers and onions on the side to add to it. You know, just for a little variety occasionally. I might even, if I come across some that I have on sale or something, some steamed broccoli or, is that right, broccoli? Yeah, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, you know, things like that to put in. To put in with it so it's just simply up to you what you want to add to it okay so that's eating it and it was good there you have it trails in 62 pepper steak till next time from my house to yours from my kitchen to your kitchen god bless